I just spent a long Sunday afternoon with Jeremy and Jeannie Baud of Baud's Exotic Reptiles, and I filmed the whole thing, man. I'm going to show you the animals that they're working with, and I'm talking geckos, variety of different snakes, iguanas, rhino iguanas, rats, ASFs, mice, and of course, a mother load of ball pythons. It's a real cool episode. Stick around. Let me show you what we got into. <laughs> What's going on everybody? It's Adam at Proper Royals. I'm real excited. I just got back from a big road trip. I was out on the road playing some music and I got to stop on my day off and hang out with Jeremy and Jeannie Baud. They were real great to host me. Jeremy's been a good buddy to me uh, as far as my show goes, as far as really supporting me in the hobby and in the community. And he and I are cooking up a pretty cool project right now, but I'm going to wait for him to unveil what that is. If we haven't met before, this channel is all about my family's journey from ball python hobbyist to ball python business. And we document everything right here. Down below, you can check out all our links for socials, NFTs, affiliate links, and of course, you could subscribe. And I hope to see you around here again in the near future. If you haven't met Jeremy Bod, first and foremost, go down and check out his channel. That's in the description as well. Bod's Exotic Reptiles, there on Instagram, Facebook, book and a YouTube channel with uh, quite a lot of followers, 13, 1500, I'm not sure. Jeremy is an absolutely good dude in this industry. He's very active, but he's been very, very good to me and I appreciate that. I met him at Daytona in 2021. Jeremy's been a guest on my show on Tuesday nights on Proper Royals Live that we do. He's real supportive of US ARC at the 2021 Daytona auction. His donation raised $27,000 for US ARC, which is real valuable these days. We all see what's happening with the legislation going on right now. So just all around a great person and I'm real happy to be aligned with. He's got a great facility, animals all over the place, but it's beautiful, nicely organized, well-kept, clean, quality operation. The video today jumps around a little bit. It might be a little jerky. We didn't rehearse anything. We didn't script anything. We just went to town filming. Check out all the animals. I'll put some, maybe I'll put some time chapters below. If you're only interested in the ball pythons, you can skip forward kind of thing. But really, you should check out what they got going on with all of their different animals. It's real cool. Enjoy the show today. And so what are your main uh, species? I see Cresties already, clearly, but uh, um, what else you got? Just Cresties in this room. That's all they are in here. This one is like, she's really special. She's um, from, I got her from Limited Edition Geckos. And she's from their Insanity Tiger line. Holy cow, look at that. I'm just looking on the screen right now. I haven't yeah. seen in person. My goodness, okay. And she's not even fired up yet. Yeah. How, how old is she? Oh gosh, she's young. July 21. Okay, is all when right. She was born, so they're slow growers. And do you so. all have geckos available like you have your ball pythons? Um, or not? We do. I only have three at the moment because okay. we've just recently right. got into this, but this is one baby that um, hatched last year. That's for sale. Very nice. nice and that, this one's on Morph Market? It's not on Morph Market. I haven't posted them on Morph Market just because of the weather. Gotcha. You can't ship anyway, so. Yeah. This is another one. Get in touch on Instagram or uh, Facebook kind yeah. of Yeah. Okay. Almost an extreme Harley Quinn for this one. They're kind of nice. like, what are you doing with me? Because they sleep during the day typically. Yeah. There you go, buddy. And so how many how many geckos do you have like what's the like kind of the stacks your uh, breeding stock and what you keep and well all these that. are all my females on okay. this side and then i have all the males on that side yep because the females their tanks are a little bit larger because the males go in there to breed so oh i see they're and these are the show show the the egg the lay boxes with the dirt where they dig and put the eggs oh it's just right here yeah it's just so a, they actually put their head in there to regulate the temperatures and stuff before well to make sure that it's moist enough for their eggs to survive yeah yeah and instinctually they figure out that's where you set it up mm -hmm. for them to uh well sometimes they'll lay in the substrate that's why i've only got a really thin layer to mm -hmm. hopefully 
make them lay in the lay box yep. but i figure i'll see if they're digging around right. usually you know like close to yep. their time frame how many eggs will they lay in a clutch two two sometimes two i mean we had the one last year she laid three but i think only two were fertile and one was i got gotcha. you infertile so and they do once a year you get more eggs no more often they do uh every 30 to 45 days hey two eggs. Yeah. yeah now we're talking and it just oh, depends look, here we go. yeah i've got a couple this one's good i don't think these two are good but like my first time mom she uh laid that egg and the other one was infertile yeah show one of the little whites and we'll get out my charcoal lily white that, that's right. a really popular one it seems like he's not fired up so he looks a little ghost in ball pythons kind of yeah yeah but Look when he fires up he's yeah. like almost come where the browns are is like almost black you can start to see it on the side starting to come through yeah yes you can and the lily white trait is the white here and the white tail. Ah, he's a beauty. How old yeah. is he? He is, um, gosh, 2020 okay. is when he was born. So he'll be able to breed um, next season. Yeah. And what's their uh, age, uh, lifespan generally? It really depends on husbandry sure. and care and stuff. But I've heard people say 15, 20 Oh, cool. Years, so. All right. Yeah. They can live a long time. Uh, he's beautiful. Let me see if I can get his eyes. Hang on. Let me, let yeah, me he's in, got pretty let me eyes. Come in close here. Ah, that's cool. That might be like the thumbnail picture right there. <laughs> that's real cool. He was my first expensive purchase, I think. <laughs> <laughs> but I couldn't pass him up. Wasn't so. the last. No, he wasn't <laughs> yeah. the last. And he's not still the last. There's... This one's pretty cool. I just got him not too long ago. That's why he's on paper towels. He's a super Dow. Look at that. Okay, so is is that the uh, basically the piebald effect in a crested gecko form? Um, no, genetics are so different in crusties than okay. they are from ball pythons, and I'm still learning quite a bit about those. Gotcha. The larger spots are called ink spots, and that's why I got him. I actually have a white super Dalmatian gecko that I've been waiting for, but weather's been yeah pretty cold so and he um when he's not fired up he's kind of fired up now he's almost a white oh really yeah okay. so this is like his darker color and is that for like showing off to the females or is that what is the, just they'll, they'll do it during like feeding time night time oh okay sometimes when you take them out like how oh, the so lily white times a day yeah ah, okay so this enclosure what's what is this one for that's and I'm sorry, what are pectinatus? Uh, spiny, or they're spiny tail Mexican iguanas. Oh, okay, cool. Um, these ones here, I could, I could pop the lid open again. And it's what, 64 degrees outside or so? I, the seasonal because temperature. Of the, because of the rain and everything. Yeah. And they just, oh, sorry. I doubt they're gonna come out. Right. Some dubios. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I put them in here because they love to eat those, but some of them escape into here. But, oh, there they are right there. One on top Holy of the other. Holy cow, look at that. Your little ants all over them. Now, what are the genetics that make that? It, it is white and black. That's just a local. That's a locality thing for these. Yeah. They have they have ones that are called banana pectinatus. Okay. Their their claws are sharp, so you yeah. gotta be careful. But they're really cool looking, man. Especially the males. This is a male. You can see it has the longer comb. Yep. And then the females are not going to be as colored as the males. There's almost like no like the dorsal comb is almost not even there. Oh, they're gorgeous. I'm just looking at this in. in real life not through the screen that's they're beautiful yeah that's a neat ridge on the back there normally these are from what i understand these are the fastest iguanas okay like if they're running and stuff they're like the from i heard somewhere that these are like the fastest as far as like yeah. if they were in a race or something yeah. so. whether they're fastest or not they're fast enough yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're fast you, we're not going to catch them yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, rhino iguana enclosure yeah. here yeah that's all that stays in here is the rhinos they're inside here, which I'll show you. I have to put this on top because they've learned to push this up and come out. Yeah. And they're probably. Oh yeah. Yeah, laying on top of each other. Man, they're such like. Cool, Th those are actually the two females animals. right there. Okay. And then that's the male right there. Oh, let me come around this wire here. <laughs> the two females are one's on top of the other, laying in here. So and this is another heat there. pad right here. That's probably why they're on this side. Oh, and there's the male there. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, the females have been chasing him around 
recently. So um, somebody said he throw some more hiding spots. So I ended up with these corrugated yeah. tubes. Yeah, right, this is a rodent facility here. In progress still. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. the same insulation I use on my, that I have I, on my Actually, room. it's double insulation because this is two by four framing. Yep. So I have the R13 rolled insulation in between the studs. Smart. And then instead of doing drywall, which you know the weight of that yeah, and everything, yeah. and I didn't want to mud it and all that, and it's just a rodent room, so I just figured I'd add some more what is that r 3.2 yeah yeah so it rates the uh insulation a little more yep that's also a solar fan there that kicks on sun must have just yeah it just came out a little through. bit yeah yep. barely and this is another solar fan it's probably three times the cost of that one however that one you can actually plug in so when the sun's not out it's always right. running you know it pulls so out that pulls out the air and that pulls in the air. The dogs. <laughs> yeah, and they, 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 they come steal. in and they steal all the dog food, yeah. uh, all the, the rodent food. Yeah. What about the plumbing? You got a pretty serious oh, uh, yeah. water system. Oh yeah. Here. Yeah, I actually got this idea from another YouTuber. You seen the plug out there where I just plug the hose in? Yeah. You know? When I need to fill up a bucket, each one of these lines, if you follow the, the PVC, yeah, it goes to each one of those buckets. And then I have like a, what is it, a three inch hose on each end there, Jeannie? There are three foot. Three, or three inch. <laughs> three <Yeah>. foot hose. <laughs> okay. So if I need to move the racks out for whatever reason, I have that little flexible hose where I can do that. Or if I want to rearrange something. And like if you look over there where you're at now, see that bucket, it actually needs water. Okay. So all I got to do is just turn this nozzle and now it's filling up. Before I would have to come in here with a garden hose, stand up on the ladder and do each one individually. It's all about figuring out efficiency and how to save your time so you can get on with stuff. Yeah. Exactly. And then, so, and then what, is it gravity fed out of there or do you have pumps that pump it out of the bucket? No, no, it's gravity fed. Gravity fed. Yeah, yeah. Basically a siphon. You're, you're, yep, it's, if you uh, look at all these airlines, or airlines, all these water lines here, Yep. there's one of it that taps into here, so the bucket always has to be higher than this stuff, you know? Yes. And then water's going through all these and then... Um, yeah, it's like siphoning, uh, yeah. changing water in a big fish tank. Yeah, I gotcha. Yeah. So yeah, the hose would go into here and this would be down into the to the grate like you can see this is kind of shoved in there and then the the rodents will just sit there and hit on this little thing here when it goes off to the side oh there's a little Water valve pushes up blink uh, exactly. drip drip yeah what species do you have in here i see i see those rats, are all I see ASFs. yeah these are all asfs okay. um I, eventually this whole rack i got a couple that are still new pair new uh colonies i just set up of just the uh, norwegian rats yeah but this whole rack I plan on ASFs. Okay. Um, typically you gotta do is uh, 2.5. And two, what does 2.5 mean? Two, uh, two would be the males and then point, like snakes, you know, how I they, got, got it, got the it. sex ratio. Okay, oh, so you, those are basically a colony in a Each in a one of these. There. Okay. ASFs, they're brutal though. They're like the Norwegian rats, you can separate a, a pregnant female and then put it in with a different colony, okay. you know, later on and, and they'll get along. ASFs, you can't do that. You gotta keep them together. You can't add like, say what one of the males pass or one of the females pass you can't add another one because the rest of the colony ended up killing oh it's so, just it okay yeah so they're very brutal and this this is my rats my, okay. nor, my norwegian rats that's going to be my mouse rack and that'll probably get moved over here or something so gotcha and what's your kind of normal flow of feed start on hop mouse hoppers and then graduate them to rats and asfs or what's yeah the, what's i usually goal? typically do three mouse hoppers in the beginning yeah and then if they're doing good and everything and no assist feeding or anything like yeah. that yeah usually the fourth i try to offer them a rat okay and you do a fuzzy a pinky I, a pup I, I do like a like a small rat pup i go by the girth of the snake yeah like if i'm hatching out like really big 100 gram snakes then i'll probably just go right to a rat Got but it. if i'm getting like 60 gram then it'll probably be five mouse hoppers before i Very switch good, over yeah. so that kind of depends gotcha. on that there's yeah. i don't have like anything really set in stone as right. far as that goes and this is the bulb wow yeah. holy cow yeah so if you're just starting breeding this is like the dream spot man we got the nice tile floor keep everything nice and tidy look how well and arranged this room is you can tell Things are where they're supposed to be and organized. I guarantee you that translates to the quality of animals. What a cool facility, man. Congratulations. Well, thank you. Yeah. These are the hatchlings here. And what are those? Just on spot where you got to 20 high and six wide? Uh, what are they? Six, 16, 16 in each tub, each rack, and there's okay. two racks. 60, 30, so 32. Yeah. Yeah, so okay, so just about just under 196 right? hatchlings here, yeah. 
Yeah, 16 in each one, yeah. Okay. But what's cool about these, like, if you're running out of room, and, you know, you can put hatchlings in those tubs right there. Take two of these out. Oh, you can triple up those. You can triple up on these, yeah. Oh, uh, you guys know I love figuring out efficiencies. That is, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, interchangeable parts. So right. now you're turning your eight, your 16, yeah, rack, so you know, you're adding yeah. another third to that. Right, so. yeah. You gotta show us some of your favorite projects, man. I know, uh, I know on my list, I was hoping that you could share some, I know Desert Ghost is huge, everybody wants to talk about that these days, and I'm big on the uh, Krypton and Cryptic project, I'd love to check out some of those, man, I know you got some killer options on that. These are your girls. Oh man, so what Jeremy and I aren't going to talk about is uh, he and I got a little project we're working on together, part of the deal is that I'm going to end up with these two girls when I have a little more space, hopefully in the next two months when I come back down, so these are both Piebald? Is that? I mean, I know it's piebald. Is that Enchi? It looks like super low, huh? It, no, it's just a just a piebald, just um just a low white on that one there. That's fantastic. And this I'd say would be what 50, 60 percent, or 40 percent white, yep. maybe something like that. But uh, that's not something that's genetic. You can manipulate that by adding other genes, you know, like Enchi and stuff like that, um, as far as getting the high white and the low white. That's why I asked about if that one was Yeah, but Enchi. no, these are just, um, these are just regular pies. It was a Mojave pie, or it was a Mojave het pied female to a banana pied male. Well, very cool. Man, I'm excited. This is, uh, they're beautiful. And there's two females. Two females, yeah. Yep. Two girls. How about that? You got a, I think you still have it. You have a, uh, super, a super pastel, uh, cryptic female, I think. Yeah, she's is it right cryptic here. Or Krypton? It's a Krypton. Krypton. Let me see. Super I think she was in shed. I got a male and a female. Oh no, this one just shed. Oh nice. I just did these tubs yesterday. This is the boy. And where's the girl at? Oh, this is the oh look, she oh, shed too. too. Got their new suits on <laughs> for the show today. Like I said, they just had new cages. Tub tubs yesterday so the colors and the patterns on these it's i try and explain it to people and it's almost like it's like the head of a clown and then a really jumbled vivid pattern in person they're not nearly as washed out as i thought that they would be from yeah. a super pastel and i'm sorry what jeremy talk us through the genes one more time i, I don't want to be mixing super pastel het clown het cryptic it's actually triple het because it's up they're also 100 percent het desert ghost too as well Whew. So yeah, they're triple heads, super pastels. And female and male. And, male. Yep. and they're both available right now? Yep. Yeah. Both available. So if you bred those two, and they're actually from two different clutches too. So really? they're not siblings. Oh, cool. So if you bred those together, because our heads, what is it, 50% would be visuals as far as the desert ghost. But no matter what, you're always going to get super pastels because they're both super pastels. They're going to throw... And all the babies are going to be either clown or They're, they're either going to be clown, kryptons... Or cryptic, actually. Or, no. yeah, exactly, yeah. And half of those, depending on your odds, but typically half of those will be desert ghost. Yes. So... You really couldn't miss on, like, I realize money is real, so we can't just go, like, creating money out of thin air, but that's the kind of investment that a long-term project can be built on right you there. You can easily double, triple your your money just on the first clutch of that. Yeah. If you put those two together, you know, because you know what Desert Ghost Clowns are going for. We won't oh say the gosh. numbers because that changes. You it know? always changes and, and time changes and relationships and people change. So that's all part of it. But mm -hmm. man, these things are fantastic. For those of y'all that watch my channel, this female here, I have a pastel clown being bred to a female pastel head cryptic. So this is my jackpot pairing. Oh yeah, you can get that there. Yeah, yeah, this is my jackpot pairing with my big girl Jenny. And she's huge, she's, she's 26, 2700 grams right now. So I hope she gives me enough eggs to take a, get a lot of shots at, uh, at creating this. Cool, what else, uh, what else do you wanna show us that you're working on that you got, uh, that maybe you're most excited about this year? I got some, it, some lots right now, actually. Yeah, um, yeah we paired last night. Yeah, I, did, I took advantage of the rain. Like, here's a, past, it's a pastel heck clown, and I have a mahogany heck clown, so I'm trying for the double heads, or they're double heads. You know, I'm going the long route on that. Um, actually, are they still, yep, they're still locked. You can see their tail twist a little bit. Yeah. 
I'm okay. speaking of big girls. Holy yeah. Cow, there we go. <laughs> so that's a freeway right there. Yeah. And then this one here, I'm not 100% sure this animal was, was um, given to me, but it they had it down as a lesser leopard yellow belly. So I could see the yellow belly in there. So we're trying to make some leopard freeways, leopard wow. lesser freeways. What we'll a see. good combination. Yeah. That's interesting. Oh yeah, this is another double yeah, head this is pairing. I could have done a visual to her, but she's a head puzzle. She's a super oh. pastel lesser head puzzle that I got from Sean Bradley and she's actually had her ovulation and pre lay shed she's actually due to delay eggs on the 20th okay so what's today's date? today is the 5th six. Six. yeah about 15 days or so give or take I did a pastel uh, spot nose to her head puzzle head puzzle yeah sorry it's a long shot trying to get a visual spot nose male. That's what I'm looking for. A visual spot nose male puzzle. And it's going to be pastel too because it's super pastel. This girl here, we're waiting on her pre shed. She's actually from Ozzy. She is a het pied, but she's also yellow belly orange dream. 100% het pied. Uh, I have to get up on a step ladder and take a look real quick. Oh, where are you? Oh, that. that. She looks like she's starting to go in the shed now. So she's it's, one of my favorites. What were the jeans on her again? She's from Ozzy. Yeah. Um, so the good quality there, of course. Yeah. But she's a head pied and she's also yellow belly and orange dream. Gotcha. Yeah. And I put another male that was a proven breeder that I picked up from Ozzy, which is um, a pastel enchi double head candy pied. I'm hoping to get obviously everything is going to be 50% head candy but I'm, I'm shooting long shots on this one here yeah I'm trying to get the Enchi yellow belly um, orange, dream. orange dream visual pie yeah a male I'm right. looking for a male right. on that so. yeah long shot but yeah. you know I like the long shot well and you gotta that somebody's got to do the work that's how it's gonna gonna come about on it you got a candy pie don't you I got two of them can we look at those yep. that is one of my uh, definite goals and, I, got a uh, male and I haven't a seen one in person before Okay, here's a a this is a pastel. Okay. That is the boy. All right. You'll hear me tell you that I love and the candy the gene and what they can do. So there's candy pied here. You spill the water when I took it out. Get a little poop on its butt. <laughs> but the thing is with these, that coloring will stay. Um, I like the banana pies too, but I'm not a huge fan of like the black speckling. Right. So the thing with these is they won't get that black speckling. No, and they stay that clean know. and they get, they, I think they get very bright. And that one is, looks like it's heading into shed or does it have like a ghost influence or anything? No, that's, that's it. That's, that's yeah. the color of them, yeah. And then they have the deep, dark, bright red eyes. They're kind of hard to see on camera, but just like really garnet, uh, yeah. blood red eyes. Yeah, they always mm -hmm. see it. And he's past. Yeah, he's the he's pastel. Got the pastel in. Which is, you could see it, it's a little bit lighter in color. Mm hmm. Yep. So, yeah, these, these are actually siblings. And I didn't care. I could have waited another, you know, a little longer to not have siblings. I don't think I'm ever going to pair those two together. Mm, but that's okay. not what my plan was to do that. Right. I got those. We've got the, the male Aussie I'm going to use to make hats, you know, and then the female. The babies from those, from the male, will be going to the female. Plus we have the Aussie so. boy who's... That's right. Het pie. Yeah, het with the candy. candy. Yeah, yeah, the double already. No, I need to change this so She spilled her water, shed, and pooped. <laughs> Trifecta. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I know, we just did these So she is a pie. She's a het pied. She's a cinnamon yellow belly orange dream. Now, see, I have an animal that was sold to me. She's actually being bred this year that was sold as a cinnamon orange dream yellow belly and they look nothing alike no yeah it was one of the very first snakes that i bought and i wonder if uh does it have the orange color into it like that one does or yeah it's got the creamy sides that come up um and and even more so it's got a brighter it looks almost like the the pot the uh, orange dream um breeder that you just showed us a moment ago from a the colors that come up from the belly, mm -hmm. but the tied together, chained together cinnamon pattern is not present on mine whatsoever. No. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the, it's more like I mean it is, but it's not it's not the small like that. It's 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 much the bigger, more traditional cinnamon look. 
Okay, well, it's the yellow belly that's doing that right yeah. there. Yeah. So maybe yours. Maybe mine uh, missed on the yellow belly. Okay. Show me a picture whenever you. Uh... I will. Hey, okay, here's a. Uh, I'll show you. I'll show you some desert ghost visuals that I hatched out. All um, right. One of them is not mine, and I won't say whose it is because I'll let them announce that on their on their cool. video. Cool. So um, these are just what? the hottest things in the industry oh, right in, now. She's, she's in, in shed too a little bit. Yeah. So that's a cypress, I believe. It might be honey as well, but it's a cypress desert ghost. Yep. But yeah, it's in shed. It's you know how they go in shed, and they look they look blue, and then like right before they shed, they look they normal again. Beautiful, yeah. Yeah, that's where she's at. Yeah. Normally she would be much brighter and, and better looking, but she's like right at that edge of shedding. Jeannie, do we have a fire extinguisher around here? You might need this. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's got jokes, little act, huh? Oh yeah. Now look at this guy uh, or girl. Look at this girl. Bam. Okay. Yeah, in person, I, I, I'm st I've never seen a desert ghost in person. So, yeah, guys, if I can convey it, like, in person, that thing is electric. It's just, it's, yeah. And the colors behind the neck there on the sides. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so she's a cypress, honey, pastel. pastel. Okay. Jeez, it almost makes me wish that there was just a normal that we could, it's, it, that, there's no... My brightness level is set to zero. It's completely even. I'm not. I haven't, uh, you know, adjusted any settings from anything else we've been doing on this video. How's it picking up on that? That was real good. And it's so it looks clean. legit from what you're seeing here. Yeah. Okay. Now the cleanness. Is a lot of people like. like this one more. And you tell me what your thoughts on on the coloration. A lot of people have their favorite is this one here. Now mine, and I'm not a hundred percent sure exactly what it is. I think it's Cypress Enchi. Orange or Dream, you think? It possibly could be Orange Dream in there, but look at that thing. Holy cow. Yeah, the, there is a, the noticeably different orange on the top there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting. It's almost like it glows. Yep. And these are also Pos Heck Kryptons, too. <laughs> so it could be Heck Clown or Heck Cryptic. Okay. Yeah, so the male, the father, well, it actually came from Will. And it will, it'll be one or the other, because they're alive, No, no, it's, right? pos it's possible, though. The the father... Oh, one was, oh, one, there's a hat-to-hat to, hat to start yeah. with? The father of the clutch was, is a Cypress Honey, Pos Orange Dream, that came from Will from RCR, mm -hmm. uh, Royal Canadian Reptiles. It came from a Krypton. So one of the parents was a Krypton. Yeah. So it's, so the father is either Heck, heck Clown or Heck Cryptic. Yeah. So it's one or the other, the father for sure. Yeah. So now 50, yeah. Okay, so then so 50 percent that. chance that this is going to be, I just it. don't know if it's Clown or Cryptic to approve out the father, yep. so, which I'm hoping to do that this year. Uh, and then if people have seen your channel, you have a, uh, you had a really interesting situation with what seems to be a, and I'm, I'm not saying in a doubtful way, but in a best answer scenario of a Parthenogenesis clutch. Do you have those uh, oh, yeah. yep. super entries you could show off? Yeah. What's the like the quick 30 second version? Uh, and they need to, I'll, I'll link it to your video, matter of fact. I'll put a link up there. Okay, so the pairing was, was just an entry. And then the, the father, what was the father? Oh, there's a super pastel cinnamon lesser. Okay, okay. You, you can link it to the video and it explains yeah, exactly. all right. that Exactly, right, yeah, stuff. we deep dive on the video. Um, yeah. So after talking to a few people, now originally I thought Parthos, and a lot of people did too, that it only threw like the mom's genetics. I didn't think you can get like a normal out of there. Like I thought it would be either Enchi or Super Enchi. I ended up getting a normal out of that clutch, which is kind of weird. And I explained that in my video, yeah. so they want to go check that out. But I can show you what I have here. These are stunner looking snakes. Yeah, we, um, and, and what, we don't know how they're going to do. They, they, yeah, this, this yeah. one here hasn't even had its first shed. This one actually, the, the yoke was on all of these were, were pretty big. Oh uh, yeah, we'll let the, yeah, I'll just take a picture up close on it. Yeah, she like hasn't it. had her first shed yet. She ended up, um, the yoke was going bad and she broke it off. So she's going to be the smallest out of them. Actually, I had to assist feed her, though. I did assist feed her, and she took it. She took, okay. Yeah, so she might be okay. All right. We'll see. I that, mean, man, i got to see if I can get that head stamp. It's crazy, but the shadows are tough. But we maybe you can take it out here. Oh, oh, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I can take it. I can I add a little more humidity to there anyways. So, yeah, I can take her out here. But, yeah, so you just see how small she is. Yeah, tiny little girl. But she did, she did take a meal, so. Look at the clean pattern all broken up. And I've had that so many people stamp. ask me about these, but um, they look so cool, though. They do. 
Even the normal looks a little different. Yeah, and you'll see that in a second. That's a cool snake. I, I, I mean, just on a general principle of, of an animal being alive, I hope they make it. But I hope that there's some future to see what happens in three, five years and from a breeding standpoint with them. They're, that's beautiful. I mean, look at how clean. I mean, if you look up what a super inchy looks like. Yeah. And then you look at it, that. It ain't that, yeah. I loved your Facebook post when you were like, there's no reason this snake should look like this coming out of this egg. Yeah. And, I mean, just genetically, it was total oddball. Now, here's the thing, is sometimes partho clutches look a little different. Yeah. You know? So, it could, you know, it could be something there. Um, also, it could, you know, how are genes born? You know what I mean? There's mutations, yeah. Things pop up, and yep. sometimes there's, uh, here's the normal. So, this is the sibling. Well, I can see it from here. Heck yeah, it's different. It looks like it's a head tri-stripe. Look at the alien heads, how, how long yep. gated they are. That's what, like, a head tri-stripe would look like. But look, I mean, look at the the Cheerios. Yeah, the top yeah, the, the islands there. on the top there. It's the... very busy, kind of granity-ish. The head stamp is crazy. And this is like an animal, like, if you've seen, say, say like, an importer brought it in or something like that. Right. Somebody would, I would scoop up on it you quick, think thinking it's that it's some new gene or yeah, something. Just and, to, yeah, just to see what's going on. But because it's a partho, I think, you know, as far as I know, I mean, I'm just shooting in the dark here but yeah. I think it's just a part though that is making it have these funky looking looks to them you know very, very even cool. the blacks on the black on the top on the dorsal are very dark you know there's like no blushing on the blacks yeah and a lot of space in between like you say the uh, the Cheerio is a great way to put it of course the part though they're all females so she's actually doing good she's the only one that's eaten on her own but yeah two meals already this one almost looks even more reduced and less busy than that Mm -hmm. other one was now the head stamp is not like that other one reminds me just of a clown krypton kind of head stamp but even this one doesn't have you know behind the eye it doesn't have the uh you know the eye stripe connecting back there and all that yeah there's some people were messaging me saying it could be a krypton or a cryptic i was one of those people i was like yeah. you got so much head maybe there maybe you hit those and didn't <laughs> expect it and, and like, the thing is we're in florida and that's where the bells are and that's where a lot of the cryptic and krypton stuff came from or the heck cryptics, you know? Yeah. Man, they're actually posing pretty good. Yeah, what an animal. The lighting sucks in here. I apologize for that, but yeah. She's... That's all right. This one got the... Uh... Yeah. I'll probably keep one of these. Yeah. Just to play around with it. Just to see. Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm curious of how well they'll do and all that stuff too as well, you know? And, I, and people have told me that parthos, you know, they'll actually give clutches and all that stuff, you know? Then some will say that some do better than others, so I don't know. It might be just on a... You know, everyone might be different, who knows? Time will tell. And here's another one. It's another funky head stamp. That one is not as... It's from the same clutch. Yeah, these are all mm -hmm. from the same clutch. Oh, I thought you only had two of them, man. You're just oh, no, like, no, oh, no, oh, oh, by the way, here's another... Yeah, there's five total. Oh, man. This one's really cool looking, too. But this one here is a little, not as bright, maybe a little muddier or something, I guess. But I mean, it's, me it every head stamp is different. Yeah, they are. Like, look at this one. It just connects right into the, right into the neck, but not in any way we've ever seen like that, or not normally it's pretty seen. Pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like uh, it's yeah. I bet your phone's gonna ring on these, man. I'm sure it already is. Mm -hmm. But thing is, is what do you? I mean, how, yeah, how do you even price it? I mean, yeah, or how good or bad do you feel about selling it, and you know, or how long do you hold them until you? Feel you got. Nice? I gotta just tell them what what I yeah. thought think it is and you know our i gotta tell them it's a part though and i really can't control the outcome you know That's i'm gonna right. obviously probably at least 15 20 meals if i do sell any of them i'm not gonna stick to my no to my five meal thing you know right and i might even hang on to them longer just to make sure you know but it's one of those things that and i i wouldn't even that the price wouldn't even be I wouldn't, it wouldn't be more than just because of the way they look because it's a part though. Yeah, so. that's one of those like real like relationship, it's, it's almost, talk it through, what makes exactly. sense Exactly, it's everybody. almost going to yeah. be like I have to do kind of an interview thing yeah. or something, you know. So. Make sure there's an understanding. Have you seen any lace stuff yet? I have not. Okay, well here's a pastel lace, 100% head clown female. And lace is dominant, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah, there's a super lace, it's codon. Yep. 
or incomplete dom, yeah. however you want to say. <laughs> what was she saying on that? She said dominant and co-dom or non-existent or something? She or? basically said, and I thought she put it in a good way. This is the geneticist, uh, Dr. Seidel. She basically said, whatever language we want to use to convey what the fact is, mm -hmm. she said, what we see and perceive as as what humans can perceive as one gene or two gene, that's us, that's our own labeling. So she, I was really surprised. She was like, you call whatever you want, as long as you're conveying what the fact is. I was like, that is, thank you, that, uh, thank you, I appreciate that. It's permission. funny because you'll say codom and then you'll get these, oh no, it's, there's no such thing as a codom, it's yeah. incomplete doms. Like, well, you know, that's the lingo that, you know, snake breeders use. Yeah. So, so yeah, she's just the lace, um, pastel lace. 100% at Clown. She'll be doing some really, really cool stuff. I didn't produce her. She was on a, um, on a trade. All right, I think I'm down to about three minutes on the video. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. Your battery's gonna die? No, the, the space. We've got almost an hour of footage from all the, all the, uh, oh. everything oh, we've been We didn't even hit that room yet. There's another room? The Euros. <laughs> okay. So you're you're done? Don't no other storage? I don't think so. Yeah, we'll see. It oh, usually wow. clicks off at, at thirty. We'll okay, see. Okay, so it's she she is also a lace. She's a hundred percent high clown, but she's leopard. Oh, you know what? Let me look. That's a beautiful animal here. She's a yeah, black she's pewter cool. leopard lace. So black pewter is going to be black pastel and pastel leopard, and then lace, of course. And if if you guys don't know what what lace can do, like in a clown, look up a like a lace clown or. Or look up with a white lace. A white lace is what 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 a super lace the super is. is yeah. yeah. So yeah, I'm really excited to see what she yeah, does. Yeah, that's really vivid there. It's a it's it's a striking snake, doesn't it? Hey, so huge thanks to Jeremy and Jeannie Baud at Baud's Exotic Reptiles for hosting me. I had a real blast, and unfortunately, I had to wrap up a little bit early. I had some other commitments to get to, but I can't wait to get back. Show them some love and support. Give them a subscribe, if nothing else. Uh, also, go check out their Morph Market page. Get in touch with them. If you see some animals that you want from them, by all means, I would highly, highly recommend their animals. You see their facility top notch. Check out these videos here to check out everything that we have going on here at Proper Royals. We'll tell you about it all from business to hobbyist stuff to collecting uh, the animals, everything. We document it all right here. Thanks for watching. Until next time, see ya!